Muchas gracias, pues, primero de todo, gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. Yo soy, este año me nombraron el Hardy, Hardy Fellow, Curatorial Fellow aquí en el Peabody Museum. Mi primer trabajo aquí es estar trabajando con las flautas nativas americanas de Centroamérica y de México y grabándolas, estudiándolas y grabándolas. Pero, además, me gusta hacer conexión con la comunidad. Entonces, es una propuesta que parte de mi tiempo aquí se dedicara conectando con la comunidad latina y este proyecto con Zoomex es uno de esos proyectos que me gustó mucho cuando conocí ese sitio de energía, los estudiantes y la posibilidad de desarrollar algo y cuando hace dos años el profesor Carrasco del Mesoamerican Archives, Moses Mesoamerican Archives aquí en el Peabody Museum me invitó a que hiciera un concierto, lo hice con estudiantes y miembros de la comunidad de East Boston. Entonces, cuando recordé eso, dije, quiero hacer otra experiencia, pero esta vez con un tema, el tema del impacto musical que tiene la migración del nor de, al norte del sur, de la migración latinoamericana a los Estados Unidos, y el impacto positivo que tiene musical. Entonces dije, perfecto, podemos hacer eso con los estudiantes y la comunidad de Zoomix. Gracias. 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 Bit of information about Zoomix in case, um, just as a backdrop. Zoomix has been in East Boston for 21 years. Uh, we are primarily a youth music organization. We do after school programming for youth from all over the city, but primarily from East Boston. Uh, we work with roughly 850 students a year in both our after school programs and our in school partnerships. And the majority of the students that we work with are either immigrants from Latin America themselves or the children of immigrants um, recently come to the country. So um, we work with a very large Latino population. And um, just, just, to, just to say one thing about what we do, uh, we were recently awarded with the National Arts and Humanities Youth Program Award from the White House, which honors us as being one of the top 12 youth arts organizations in the country. Um, so that's just a bit about Zoomix. Um, we do all different types of programs from songwriting to instrumental music, group lessons to private lessons, dancing, we have, you know, a whole lot of different things. Um, so when we first met Dr. Loco um, two years ago, it was a really great fit because he came to us and started working with some of our youth and really upping the musical game of some of our more accomplished and seasoned musicians. And I know that they have, both last year when we worked with him and this year, really enjoyed his presence and his energy. We look at this um, event as a real opportunity to be able to connect our youth participants and our community more to the museum and the resources that he has to offer. Um, East Boston is a really beautiful neighborhood, but is often separated from the rest of the city because it is geographically. So the more opportunities that we have to let our young folks know that there are things for them outside of our immediate neighborhood, the better. Um, so on that note, I would like to introduce to you Jose Cuellar, who um, I will have him tell you more about the event on April 11th. But I can tell you that we have three different ensembles playing in the event, our Latin Ensemble, our Diversity Band, and also our Mariposa Ensemble. So um, they're very excited. So, okay. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. I also want to thank you for coming to help us acknowledge and publicize and let folks know about this event. Uh, when I came to Kipari before, as part of the activities that Professor Carrasco has organized, uh, sponsored by the Moses Mesoamerican Archive, uh, one of my intents was to make connections with the community. And uh, partially because that's part of my framework, part of my approach to uh, ethnic studies, uh, part of my approach at the academy. I come from uh, the Chicano Studies perspective, the Ethnic Studies perspective, and we're guided by the principle that we are community-centered as opposed to academy-centered. And we come to the academy to make sure that academy resources reach the community 
and in an action that we call affirmative action, reach out to the community and bring folks from the community to the academy. And this is one of those events. Um, done several things here as part of this honor that I received, this fellowship that I received, uh, the Hurdy Fellowship. Uh, one was a family event where we, in the other room, met with families and played flutes for them and taught them how to taught the children how to make percussion instruments and we engaged uh, underscoring the, the, the Native American tradition and connecting that with my primary job here, uh, a function here at the museum this semester, which is to research and record uh, as many of the Native American flutes and other instruments as possible, uh, particularly those that come from the central uh, Valley of Mexico and from Central America, from Mesoamerica. And that's the primary task. But also as part of being here, I thought we should connect in addition to the family program, uh, reach into the community and make this contact. And fortunately, I had made this connection with Zoomix and uh, incredible space, incredible energy. And one of the things that I saw was the tremendous self-esteem that these children get there uh, and as they develop. And so that really encouraged me to try to do something to bring the two together, and in particular bring the community to the university and use the space and the opportunity here to showcase these marvelous developing musicians, to showcase these students, uh, and also to showcase their teachers, because the faculty is also a very committed faculty. You can't have students without faculty, and I thought this would be also an opportunity to let the Harvard community see and understand how faculty members come to this, teachers come teach at this institution and relate to the students in a way that provides for them to learn not only how to play an instrument, but develop their self-esteem and prepare themselves for the future. And the third thing I thought was important was to show how Zoomix as a center of the community, as a center in the community of Boston, also attracts community musicians, musicians who are talented in the community who I thought also might be part of this showcase to show folks at Harvard that in East Boston there's community musicians that are tremendously talented. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to do that, to showcase students, faculty, and community. And the larger theme using the concept of the musical impact of the Latino diaspora and showing one of the many different positive consequences of this diaspora that oftentimes is painted in negative colors uh, from a negative perspective. And I thought this would be an opportunity to demonstrate one of the many positive impacts that the diaspora has, and that's a musical impact. So from that perspective was kind of what I approach it, what we're doing, and we're hoping that this event uh, will be as successful and has as positive an impact as, as we're planning on it. Vamos a tener un evento el 11 de abril. Háblanos un poco sobre este evento. Ese evento vamos a hacer un concierto que vamos a presentar aquí en Harvard, en el salón The Geology Lecture Hall, número uno, que está aquí al lado del museo. Invitamos a todo el mundo a empezar el concierto a las 6 de la tarde y después vamos a tener una recepción aquí en el museo, después del concierto. Así es que invitamos a todo el mundo que venga. Sí, así que esperamos verlo el 11 de abril. Carla Medina, Más TV.